I gotta watch the Bean Soldier, uh, the Bean Soldier Clash. That's gonna be our next stream game. I gotta watch Bean Soldier and Who Dat. We gotta do it. We're gonna do it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Bean Soldier coming off a win of our most recent Frostfall tournament and the Illustriad Season 2 champion taking on Who Dat in an epic clash here. I'm very excited for this one as these casters are both bringing some pretty interesting decks here. But Bean Soldier gonna get this one kicked off with the coveted Rabbit. Astravid able to grab the top three cards of your deck and add one to your hand, generating incredible card advantage and a five defense Elestral that can withstand a ton of attacks. And Rabbit has proven to be the top card in the game for quite a long time because of its ability to force an opponent to attack over. In fact, the metagame has shifted in such a way to deal with it with many casters opting to utilize cards that have the six attack stat, whether it be through effects or otherwise, to take it out. And there is an earthquake. That's one way to get rid of the rabbit. You just smash it into the ground and clear it off the field right away. And who dat gets rid of that. Let's see if he's gotten a less response here, rocking that earth beat down deck. Gonna throw down a rune face down. Looks like he's got two, but does he have an Elestral? He's gonna be going out with the Lumaru, baby! A solar Elestral hits the field, but it's gonna be misenchanted with water. Lumaru has picked up some favorability in this tournament as a five attacker with two defense, creeping a little over Necroft because it essentially does the same thing. You water enchant it and you're able to, uh, you know, get around tsunamis. So Lumaru hits the field, not really gonna be using its effect, but Bean Soldier able to get exactly what he wants here. His Elichick hits the field and he can immediately search out his Divine Rune, a key piece of his strategy as Bean Soldier is gonna be looking to utilize Demeter, not just to buff up his Elestrals by three attack and three defense, but most importantly, provide the Nexus Spirits for cards like Equilinks to be able to do what they do best. And in the new style Earth deck that Daybreak runs, when you have cards like Bloom and you have cards like Mudlet that wanna receive and wanna take advantage of Spirits on field, you gotta have Demeter, a key part of the strategy, and an Earthquake of his own! Bean Soldier is just gonna Earthquake the Lumaru. I think if you're Houdat, you really aren't too mad about that. You got a lot of value out of out of that Lumaru. You're gonna take a Spirit of Damage here from the Elichick, most likely, but that's not a huge deal. You burned Bean Soldier's EQ. Obviously, Bean not gonna utilize his Demeter here, opting to just go for the Earthquake to make sure Houdat cannot kind of accumulate field presence. The question is, does he have an answer now to this four attack Elichick on the field? Houdat has an answer. It's gonna be Sorlet. Sorlet hits the field with his five attack and will he misenchant again? He does. Houdat says, I don't need to enchant any of my Elestrals with the right spirits. These are all five attackers and poison tipped arrow on Bean Soldier. Perfectly timed as that will drop the attack set of Sorlet down to three, ensuring that Elichick is not threatened by it. And because Houdat misenchanted it, he can't use Sorlet's effect to change the position of Elichick. A massive play there from Bean Soldier as he knows he gets advantage here at the end of this. But the Atlantis! No shot! Atlantis gonna hit the field and buff up Sorlet to become a four attacker and both these Elestrals are gonna crash into each other. Who down with an incredible play? Absolutely bonkers. Throwing down the Atlantis Stadium. You didn't expect that, did you? Equilinks is here though, and now it is time for Bean Soldier to do what Bean Soldier does. Demeter almost certainly gonna follow, and here she is, the goddess of the harvest, Demeter herself, blasting out with three Earth Spirits on Bean Soldier's end. And now the pressure of Nexus is up in Hudat's face. This is where Bean Soldier has an opportunity to make a big play. He's gonna activate Equilinks' effect, allowing him to Nexus Spirits from his Demeter onto his equalings and then he can target and destroy a rune on the field most certainly going after one of those face down runes and he destroys an ambrosia that can prove to be really advantageous now with that extra spirit on it equalings will deal two damage if it hits Hudat's spirit deck directly let's see if he has a response to that other face down rune and he does not two spirits going down and Hudat down to 12 spirits looks like he's gonna toss an owloon and we'll see if he's gonna toss anything else it's gonna be a Zapter. So Bean Soldier at 10 spirits, but four on field. Houdat with 12, with one on field, taking advantage of these Misenchant water plays. Very interesting to see a deck utilizing water Misenchants. And here comes Eddie. Can I get some Eddies in the chat? 
For the newest water, Elestral and Daybreak, Eddie with a unique effect to change the position of an Elestral on the field. He can easily change the position of that equal links to defense and allow Eddie to attack over it because of the buff from Atlantis. Bean Soldier forced to respond the Altar of Stars. Absolutely massive Altar of Stars going to Nexus and shift that spirit around. It's unclear to me where he pulled the spirits from. I think he ended up pulling it off the links. So I think he's actually a neutral there. The Altar of Stars shifting Eddie to defense and preventing it from being able to do its thing. Who dat? Almost had a big play to clear Equalinks, but now he's in a very tough spot because if Lynx is able to get its next effect off again and pop that face down rune, this could snowball very quickly. Bean Soldier indicating he wants to activate this next effect. He's going to shift that spirit over to his Lynx. That back row is popped and it's a shield of Achilles. Absolutely massive. The rune removal from Equalinx is so big. And now if Bean Soldier has another Elestral, he can simply plow through. He's going to expend to draw, looking to try to gain more advantage for later in this clash. As he knows his Equalinx can take out the Eddie no matter what. It's going to be an Ambrosia hit in the field. He's going to pull it right off of that. Off of his Equalinx. And he's going to heal three spirits here. With the fruit of Drataya coming out, healing him up. Putting him in a really powerful position here at this point in the clash. That altar of stars was massive. The Ambrosia even bigger here. And now Equalinks can just switch to attack position and take out Edward going into the battle phase. Who dat had so much momentum there for a bit. Needed to clear the links, but that hit onto the shield of Achilles was just insane. Preventing uh, that, you know, the potential counterplay. Lumaru comes out again, though. Most likely going to be misenchanted with water to take advantage of Atlantis, making it a six attacker. He does indeed do exactly that. The question is, what is Bean Soldier's face down rune? Does he have another answer to an attack? Lumaru fires off, leaps forward, goes to the equalings, but Bean Soldier's got the Gorgon's gaze. He says, no, not today. He's going to pull out two new spirits and put that Lumaru into a statue stopping it from attacking preventing it from really doing anything at all and now bean soldier can continue to put the pressure on with demeter providing the buff he needs to attack over the six attacking lumaru bean soldier's got to be feeling pretty good right now he could choose to go really aggro doesn't even need to mudlet hits the field that immediately swaps the position of lumaru lumaru is a three defense celestial now but not going to be strong enough to deal with the equalings going to nexus clear the Atlantis now. Really interesting play there on Bean Soldier's end. Looking to try to take advantage of this late game. As now he's able to clear the Atlantis. Lynx can take out the Lumaru. And Mudlet can attack for two directly on Hudat. And with Hudat having very few cards in his hand. It's going to really be interesting to see if Bean Soldier can maintain this field presence. No back row. Hudat forced again to take two spirits of damage here. Down to just eight it seems. Absolutely nuts. Equalinks putting on so much pressure and Hudad has not been able to respond and we call back to that turn two Where that earthquake came down on the Astrabit. I bet you who dad's wishing he still had that EQ right about now Losing his field presence. He's got a rabbit of his own though. That could be big. He's thinking about it Is he gonna make the play? He is he is gonna play out the rabbit here, but rabbit in a dangerous position Again, we talk about daybreak adding some new cards to the card pool especially for earth nexus getting advantage with mudlet Mudlet is an incredible rabbit counter because all you got to do is give it a spirit and rabbits forced to attack position where it does not want to be. So lots of unique tools added in daybreak. I love seeing some familiar faces from the prior two sets, but again, got to show some love to these new cards like Eddie, Mudlet, Spectrus we saw in the last clash and Mudlet is going to threaten big time here. Who dat? looking for something right he's got three cards off the top of his deck to try to figure out how can i clear this field something like a resting on your laurels would be really advantageous to at the very least get rid of that equal links otherwise even counter runes don't really help you here you got to get rid of the links somehow so let's see if Hudat was able to find anything from the top of his deck after going for that rabbit play does he have any answers these five decks do typically run resting on your laurels He's got it. Oh, he has the laurels. He found it. And Lynx goes down. Who dat? With a Hail Mary here at this last third of this clash. He clears the equalings, giving him some hope. But again, Rabbit incredibly vulnerable to Mudlet. And the Demeter still sitting there, able to put in some work. One back row for Who dat. Still has a chance to hang in there. 
at least he's not threatened by the power of equalings right now but man oh man bean soldier put on a clinic with that equalings for many many turns if you can get oh no another one equalings hits the field it's gonna be a dense fog response right away to shut down these effects that's actually huge for who that's gonna force bean soldier to utilize demeter's effect to be able to hit over this astrabit which may not be as good as you would think because he's gonna still be forced to take a few spirits of damage here once the rabbit goes down the rabbit does indeed go down and mudlet gonna pressure for two more spirits so the dense fog really cool play from Hudat. seeing dense fog make its first appearance here in our top cut but not gonna be enough it looks like Hudat might be scooping this one and he is going to indeed scoop game one here as bean soldier takes it one nothing here actually he takes it eight three on the scoop but he was he was in a pretty powerful position he's gonna move to one oh in this best of three clash bean soldier our previous tournament winner and a Lestriad Season 2 champion. Ready to rock and roll. He's not messing around. All right, well, Hudat taking a loss in Game 1 does have the opportunity to choose who goes first here going into Game 2. I think given his deck and what he's trying to run, I do think he probably wants to go first. It's not like you're scared of Lavalith if you're Hudat because you're kind of playing the deck that wants to run it. And he's looking like he's going to kick it off with a rabbit. So really good start here for Hudat. You got to be feeling good about that going into kind of the, the game two you really got to get some sort of an advantage here and what better card to give you that advantage than the rabbit as he can now grab one of these three cards from the top of his deck decide which one is going to be most optimal obviously going to take a peek at his hand to see if any of those cards are going to be uh you know better fitting but who dad got to be feeling good about this start this is a great time to remind you that there's been no better time than now to get involved in elestrals you can pick up a starter deck for just 25 bucks and the crinidale deck Plays really well right out of the box. Comes with three packs. Organized play has begun at local game stores across the country with over 100 stores running events for Alestrals. And Alestrals is now in over 250 stores across the world. We've actually gotten into some stores in Germany. We've gotten into our first Canadian stores. We've got some stores in the UK coming around. Uh, even Peru as well. So it's been really fun to see Alestrals start to branch out across the globe. And a big shout out to all the casters who've been playing and getting your games in and having a ton of fun. And I just been I just been over the moon, guys. What a what a treat. So thank you all. Uh, Dials, I think you are the only one who topped with solar. Bean Soldier gonna mirror his turn one. Does Hudat have an answer? This is where you really want a Gorgon's gaze, but I don't think he's gonna have it. Elichick providing so much consistency for Bean Soldier as he can grab that Demeter. So clutch. Demeter again, the kind of cornerstone of Bean Soldier's entire strategy. Demeter is what enables the Equalinks. It's what enables the Mudlet. It's what enables plays like Altar of Stars. Demeter is so crucial for this deck. And if you're Bean Soldier, you know you got to have it. So you might as well just get it on turn one. And he's just going to go for it right here. So Demeter does hit the field. It looks like he's going to go with just the two spirits on this one. And the Goddess of the Harvest doing her thing. Let's play that animation one more time as Bean Soldier now has the opportunity to disenchant a spirit from Demeter buff up his electric to seven attack and now be able to attack over this rabbit if who dad has no response bean soldier sets a couple back row and let's see if there is an answer here does who dad have a counter rune to deal with it no he is gonna let his rabbit go down we saw him bluffing an ambrosia in game one perhaps bluffing something again although with rabbit i gotta believe that he was able to find some counter support so perhaps just using uh you know waiting for a better opportunity to use it dad has got a lot of options in his hand. This is very early in the game. What is he going to choose to go for to take out this Elichick? It's going to be that Lumaru again. Lumaru with the Misenchant Water Spirit Leviathan, making him a Water uh, Enchant Celestial to play around Tsunami. And that 5 attack stat does allow it to attack over the 4 attack Elichick. So not a terrible position for Hudat. Bean Soldier obviously with 2 counter rune options. Looks like he's going to play one of them. Bean Soldier contemplating his play here as this Lumaru is going to be attacking his Elichick. He is going to go for the Altar of Stars here. Altar of Stars, again, a key card allowing him to move spirits around his field in a unique way. He's going to have to toss his Demeter to do it, but he will save his Elichick and force that Lumaru to defense position. 
I gotta say, Altar of Stars, since I created the game, has been probably my favorite card to play. I think it enables some really cool strategies in the battle phase, and it can just do a lot of really cool stuff. And speaking of really cool stuff, Viscerous here, the battle bug, Elestral has hit the field. This is really scary if you're Hudat, because if your face down rune cannot deal with this now, this game can get out of hand really fast. Looks like he's got something. It's the poison tipped arrow, which only saves him so much. Poison tipped arrow is great in the sense that it slows down the Viscerous and clears it off the field at the end of the turn. But another Viscerous is going to hit the field here no matter what. So if you're being soldier, you're feeling okay about this trade. This is not a bad trade if you're being, because basically Viscerous takes out the Lumaru. Another Viscerous hits the field in defense position. And then Elichik's able to swing for two. So you're getting a pretty good advantage here if you're being soldier. And Hudat gonna be forced to take two from Elichik and then an additional spirit to utilize that poison tipped arrow and clear the attack position Viscerous from the field. So we're gonna see all of those plays take place. A couple water spirits getting tossed out. Ultimately, being soldier sitting here with Viscerous and Elichik. And this is where. If you're who dat, you got to be really, really careful, man. I'm going to be honest with you. You got a couple things here that you got to worry about. You got to worry about that Viscerous switching to attack position. If somehow Bean Soldier is sitting on a second altar of stars and you go to attack into that Viscerous and it changes to attack position, you are in a really, really, really bad spot. But he's got the Earthquake, so it's not even going to matter. Earthquake's going to come down and take out the Viscerous. He's not even going to let him have a chance to make that play. So good plays there from who dat. Often to get rid of the Viscerous. I'm curious what his answer is going to be for this Elichik, though, sitting on two spirits. This is going to be interesting to watch. What is Hudat's answer here? I am curious if Bean would have sided out his Tsunamis if he's running it. It's going to be the Eddie. Eddie's big. Eddie's so big. Eddie's so big. He's going to change the position of that Elichik to defense. And now Eddie can run it over. Bean Soldier opted to save his Elichik earlier in the Clash. Is he going to do it again? Oh, he is. It's a Gorgon's Gaze again! Gorgon's Gaze comes out. He's going to pull two new spirits to make it happen. Not going to pull off that Elichik, meaning that he really wants to save those spirits on field. And Eddie unable to do the things that Eddie wants to do. So Bean Soldier is going to get advantage here. What is the Elestral that he has? It's going to be the Mudlet again. Mudlet proven to be so powerful. Both Eddie and Mudlet do similar things in the Daybreak metagame. Eddie has the higher attack stat with four and changes on cast. Mudlet gets to do what Eddie does every turn because every time Mudlet receives a spirit, it can utilize its effect. And two spirits are going to be hit there from Hudat. That Elichik is putting on a clinic. Don't forget that Elichik hit the field on the first turn for being soldier. So he's just putting in the work with that Illustral. But again, Mudlet versus Eddie, two, two very similar effects that can function very differently based on the decks they're played in. Again, Eddie only works once. Mudlet can work every single time it receives. Do we have a resting on your laurels here? It is resting on your laurels. We'll clear the Mudlet, which is really big. No back row from being soldier. So Hudad has an opportunity here to get an empty field, but he needs a five attack Elestral, but he only has the rabbit. Not a terrible position for Hudat, knowing that you got rid of a Mudlet just now, because whatever you can grab here from this rabbit could be the difference of you being able to hang in this game. So, again, if you're Hudat, you're not feeling terrible, but up against Bean Soldier, this is tough because that Elichik, again, sitting on two spirits, we know Bean has a ton of ways to get rid of Astrabbit. We know he's got more Mudlets. We know he's got Earthquakes. We know he's got a Demeter, which can help him get over it. Maybe even Moss Station, which has been a pretty powerful card in the Earth metagame. So a lot of different things that can clear Rabbit here. So if you're Hudat, you really have to be mindful of whatever card you're going to grab from the top of your deck. Because whatever it is, it's going to need to be able to get you some big advantage here going into these last few turns of this clash. As Rabbit's five defense is big, but it feels really, really small against this Earth deck that Bean Soldier is running. Given how much position changing opportunity he has. And again, just simple removal opportunity that he has. Hudat does decide on the card he wants. Seemed a little hesitant there. That could mean he had more than one good option. Or it could mean that his options weren't all that good to begin with. So let's find out how these next turns play out. But Rabbit in defense. Let's see what Bean Soldier is going to be cooking up here. Hudat almost certainly going to set something face down, though, to try to dissuade Bean Soldier from making any sort of an advantage push. There is that face down rune, and he's going to pass his turn. Bean Soldier draws for his turn. Two spirits on his Elichik. How does he clear the Rabbit? It's going to be a Rabbit of his own. 
Maybe fish in that earthquake. If he if he top decks an earthquake off this rabbit, he is in such a powerful position. Let's find out. He decisively grabs that card. Knew exactly what he wanted here. Again, we talked about it in the quarterfinals. When you're able to get Rabbit out in attack position at this point in the game and threaten that way, you know you're in a really powerful position. And it is the Earthquake! Very much so! We knew that was coming. Earthquake takes out the Rabbit. And now Bean Soldier poised to hit for three Spirits here. Who dat? Minimal options to try to stop this. And he's going to just be taking three. Huge plays there from Bean Soldier. And again, I just want to remind you... That Elichick was on the field on Bean Soldier's turn one, turn two of the Clash, and it's still sitting there on the field. Hudat's been able to trade back and forth, been able to get some pressure on. Bean Soldier had a really powerful board with the Viscerous. Hudat played it back, got his, his resting out, got his Eddie out, but it seems like Bean Soldier's just had an answer every single time for whatever Hudat's thrown at him. And it's gonna be a Sorlet. Bean Soldier's one back row here is so scary. Can Sorlet clear this Elichick? He's got an answer. It's the Poison Tipped Arrow. PTA. He's gonna pull off the Elichick. That's gonna drop Sorlet down to a four attacker. He can indeed clear the Rabbit. An extra Spirit there from Bean to clear the Sorlet. But I think Hudat's down to just two Spirits left. Looks like three Spirits on Hudat's end. It's gonna be the Moss Station. Bean Soldier is indeed rocking the four attack Moss Station, which gets to six and can snowball really fast if you get a lot more spirits than that. Two spirits come off here. It's gonna be a tsunami. Who dad actually running that tsunami himself? Tsunami's big here. He'll only take one spirit to play the tsunami and save himself a spirit. Put both of these into defense position. And now, if he's able to get an Ambrosia and an Elestral, maybe he can climb this one back. He needs like a Lumaru. And an Ambro, maybe? Let's see. Forced to expend to draw. You hate to see it. He shows Kuribus to Atlantis, a PTA. This one's over. Bean Soldier is going to the finals, ladies and gentlemen. With an Ambrosia and a Gorgon's Gaze. He had he had answers for days. Bean Soldier takes it 2-0 against who dat? Earth Nexus is not quitting here in the first Daybreak tournament. And big shout out to we didn't get to see it. Hudat did have the Kerbis, but was not able to execute the combo. So Bean Soldier going to the finals. We got ourselves a finals clash with Bean Soldier once again. Remember, he was the winner of our last tournament. Let's see if I can hop in this Distant Coder game real quick. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Distant Coder versus last tournament's second place, Jayak here. And Coder kicks this one off with his Elichick. Coder is running a very similar deck to the deck we just saw with Bean Soldier, utilizing Earth Nexus to try to gain advantage. He's running the Statue Demeter, though, and he's going to grab that Demeter right away. A very, very powerful card. And the, the cornerstone of this deck, as we mentioned earlier, Demeter really allows the engine to run. It's what enables the buffs that you need for your various Celestials to attack over things like Astrabit. It's what enables the Equalings to Nexus and be able to gain advantage there. And it's also what enables the Altar of Stars and Mudlet plays as well. Jayak opting to respond with Necrof here with a Fire Spirit. We've seen a lot of Necrofs be played with the Water Spirits to misenchant and play around Tsunami. But as a game three, we might just not see an answer there. And Coder forced to expend an extra Spirit as a result of that. Jayak's deck is played in a way and built in a way to actually try to take advantage of exactly what Coder is trying to utilize, which is that... Demeter, Nexus play, those different opportunities to get spirits on field and take advantage of kind of some of the cool mechanics that Elestrals offers. Jayax deck, again, is designed to deal with that with cards like Resting on Your Laurels and Lava Lith and just trading one for one, trying to be really, you know, conservative with resource management. We have seen the Earth deck be one of the decks that can deal with this kind of fives beatdown style. Uh, let's see if Coder is able to respond here to this Necrof on turn three. It's going to be the Lynx, so he's going to push right now. He's got the combo, Equal Lynx and Demeter. We're going to see the Demeter hit the field next, most certainly. And there it is. How many spirits will he choose to put on Demeter is the big question. Let's find out. He's debating. While he's thinking about it, we're going to get Demeter's animation playing here. And it's going to be two. Two spirits on Coder's end. Can immediately buff up. That Demeter with, or that equal links, but he's going to go for the Nexus and pop the back row, and it's a Gorgon's Gaze, so a really tough position 
for Coder as Gorgon's Gaze is massive there. That's going to shut down the Lynx and essentially waste that play, allowing the Necrov to be primed to deal some big damage on this upcoming turn. Necrov, again, we see it so often misenchanted, but I have a feeling that that effect of Necrov might start to pile on here if Coder is not able to deal with it. Let's find out. Going to set another back row, trying to protect his Lynx. The safety of Equal Link so crucial to the success of Distant Coder's strategy. But he is in Laurel's range. He's in Laurel's and Lavalith range. So, very, very scary if you're Distant Coder. Let's see what Jayak is going to do here. He's going to just Gorgons in the, in the draw phase. Wow, you don't see that very often. Distant Coder with the Gorgon's Gaze in the draw phase. Using a Spirit off his Lynx. That's going to prevent the uh the the resting on your laurels and lava lith plays so so maybe some big brain there from coder because now you can't lava lith but jaya gonna just go for the astravid instead <laughs> maybe a worse outcome for distant coder that was a really cool play though i want to i want to highlight that again as jaya looks to figure out what he wants to add with the rabbit coder did a few things with that he made it so he had a le one less spirit on the field he prevented the Necro from attacking. He prevented the Laurels and the Lavalith from being live or playable cards. And even more so, he prevented the Necro from ascending into a potential Lavalith 2. So he kind of hit three Veratukas with one Teratlas Rock. That that was a bit of a stretch, but you got the point I was making. A face down rune from Jayak. Rabbit sits in defense. And now Coder is in a position where he's going to be looking to try to take advantage of this as this Necro cannot attack. Really cool play, though from Distant Coder, and it's going to keep his links alive for another turn, which is the most important piece of this puzzle, as you really need equal links if you're Distant Coder to be able to pressure that back row and also charge forward with your attack. So Coder going to be drawing for his turn here if he hasn't already yet, and going to be thinking about his play. Equal links in a position where, again, kind of a little awkward, right? Because you only have the one on the Demeter. You could use the Nexus. You could pop the back row. But then what do you do? You can't hit over the Necrof. You can't hit over the Rabbit. You need the Spirit on the Demeter to do so. Tough position to be in for Distant Coder in this game three. Let's see if he's going to push the uh, push the envelope here and go after that face down rune. The decision he makes, though, about that face down rune is going to be what decides a lot of this battle. A stellar Viscerous. You love to see that on Coder's end. Viscerous could be really impactful here. He's got another card. It's going to be an Earthquake. Earthquake's big. Earthquake is big. Two Earth Spirits. It's going to clear one of these. It's going to clear the Necrof. Coder's going to use his Demeter to buff the Viscerous. He's going all in. If Jayak has good back row here, this is going to be huge for Jayak. If this Viscerous connects on this Rabbit, this is going to be massive for Distant Coder. And if it doesn't, it's going to be absolutely devastating. It's a Gorgon's Gaze! Gorgon's Gaze is indeed going to stop the attack from Viscerous. Coder kind of went all in on that play. Earthquake to clear Necra. Viscerous buff with Demeter to try to hit over the Rabbit. But Gorgon shuts him down and prevents that play from happening. Coder's not in a terrible spot, though. But Jayak's deck revolves around throwing out... Oh, he's just going to go for the Gorgon's again! Just going to go for the Gorgons again and stop this re-enchant. That's huge from Distant Coder. Jayak goes for the re-enchant on Rabbit, trying to get his effect again. And Coder says, nah, uh not today. You're not getting another Rabbit effect. You're not going to go on the offensive. You're going to be forced to just waste your enchant for the turn. Cost some two spirits, but again, if you're Coder, not a terrible play. If you're able to attack over this Rabbit on the next turn. The question now, does Jayak have face down play? He might have been relying on that rabbit to give him the face down pressure. So if he doesn't have a counter rune here and Coder can get over this rabbit, he's in a great spot. Ah, Jayak, a wise decision, pulling the spirit off of his rabbit to heal three. And somehow, someway, Jayak's sitting at 16 spirits, I believe. That's actually bonkers. To be sitting at 16 spirits at this point in the clash is nuts. Siphoning the spirit off of the rabbit. Setting one back row. If you're Coder, you really hope you top deck Demeter here. He's got another Viscerous. That's actually huge. That's huge for Coder because the second Viscerous will buff the first one. 
and they're both six attackers now. Jayak is going to have to deal with both Viscerous. And they're both Stellar. It is a proven fact that playing with Stellars gives you an advantage in the Clash. <laughs> it's actually not true, but it certainly looks awesome. Distant Coder has two Viscerous now. This could be the comeback play he needs. If one of these Viscerous can connect on the Rabbit, he can get a third one to the field. Oh, the poison tipped arrow, but honestly, not terrible because the same play still stands. The Viscerous is still a six attacker. It can clear the rabbit. Another Viscerous can hit the field if Coder wants it. Rabbit does indeed go down. Viscerous effect activates. Another Vis hits the field. And Jayak forced to take two spirits of damage. One from a Viscerous, one from the Equalings, and then an additional spirit from poison tipped arrow. So a pretty good swing there from Coder. Coder with four Elestrals on the field, but this is where Jayak's game plan really comes into play. The PTA will clear one of them. And I gotta just be believing here that Jayak is sitting on a Lava Lith. There's some Laurels. Let's find out. One back row for Coder. It's gonna be the Lava Lith. No surprise there. Tsunami though, big chain. Distant Coder with the perfect response. This could be his window of opportunity. This is it. It all comes down to these next few plays. Coder, massive with that Tsunami, the perfect card. Does he have a way to pop that back row? Does he go for the back row? Coder has the ability to simply enchant a Viscerous Nexus over to the other Viscerous, pop the back row, and then go on the offensive. Is he gonna do it? What does Coder opt to do here? He can expend to draw, he can re-enchant. He's got the Foley Forest! Oh man! Foley Forest can provide a Nexus opportunity. He's going to go for it. I guess I'm a little confused why he didn't just enchant the Viscerous instead of wasting the Foley Forest, but that's okay. He's going to make it happen. He's going to shift. Oh, I guess it's because he got to expend to draw. That's why. He got to expend to draw. It makes sense. Viscerous connects onto the, the Lava Lith. Equal links and Viscerous hit. That's going to be three Spirits of Damage here on Jayak. I'm going to be honest. I totally have messed up the count of who has what Spirits, so... I think it's like three to eight, but I might be a little off there. My bad. What a crazy play though. Getting to expend to draw there instead of being forced to use the enchant. A wise decision actually. I, I really like it if you don't feel like you need the Foley Forest there. This is gonna really just come down to what does Jayak have because he's got these five attackers. He can attack over the equal links, which would be big, but Viscerous at six attack is massive. It's gonna be the Spectrus. Spectrus is so big because it immediately and directly counters what Viscerous does. But he opts to go for the equal links. Wise play there. Wise play there on Jayak's end. If you're Coder, you just gotta figure out how do I hit over this Spectrus? Which might be a tough choice. Mudlet will do it though. Mudlet is so massive. Mudlet shifts the Spectrus to defense, ensuring that he can attack. Two Viscerous attack directly into Jayak. Mudlet proves to be the exact card he needs and shows that Distant Coder's choice to expend to draw on that prior turn was so big because it got him to that Mudlet a turn earlier than he otherwise would have, allowing him to clear the Spectrus, the direct counter to his two Viscerous. He's not done though, Jayak with the Lava Lith. Lava Lith immediately pressures and takes out a face down Earthquake. That's gotta hurt for Coder. The back row bluff on Earthquake proves to be essentially useless and an Earthquake on Jayak's end. That could be it. Jayak drops the Earthquake. That's going to take out the Viscerous. Lava Lith can now pressure. He can take out the Mudlet. But this Viscerous only at five attack. Coder forced to expend a Spirit down to just one, I think. Wait a minute. Jayak with the incredible response. The winner of this clash goes to the finals to take on Bean Soldier. Coder's at four Spirits. Maybe he is. I told you, don't don't count how many spirits I have because I, I totally I totally have no idea. I did my best. That Earthquake being hit in the back row may be the difference of this game because if Coder has Earthquake right now, this is a totally different game. But him setting it as a bluff, losing it to Lava Lith, so big. He draws. What does he find? It's an Ambrosia. You love to see that. If you're Coder, you're feeling good about that Ambrosia. That'll get you right back in this one. But do you have an answer to deal with the Lava Lith? He has some flexibility to potentially expend the draw. He's going to switch his Viscerous to defense position and force to end this turn. Lava Lith just going to attack a draw and attack. No, no decision making there. Jayak might actually have no spirits left. 
Another Ambrosia. Coder's gonna heal up again. This is this is very close. This is very close. I just I don't even know. I don't even know where we're headed with this one. Do we see the expend to draw? We do. A shield of Achilles here would be absolutely insane. I'm just sitting here in awe because I don't even know. I don't even know where this one's going, guys. Wait, he's got a he's got a rabbit. Where did the rabbit come from? Coder's looking through his underworld to figure out what's left in his deck. Because he's trying to play his odds of what he could potentially get here to get through this Lavalith. The six attack Lavalith putting so much pressure on. If you're Coder, you're bait, you're looking for like a Demeter plus an Elestral. You just gotta clear the lith. He decides what he wants, puts the rest back. Lime green sleeves. And Jayak draws. Coder, Coder is legit just like a, a shield away from winning this one, it seems. Rabbit gets cleared by Lavalith. Coder draws for his turn. Does he have an answer to the six attack, two fire Lavalith? Again, it's just wild to think that that earthquake face down bait. It's Moss Station! No shot! Distant Coder with a six attacker of his own. Altar of Stars, he reveals it. Is that game? Coder had no spirits left. So crashing into Lavalith would be his doom. Jayak seems to take this one on the back of Lavalith at the end. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, Jayak versus Bean Soldier Man.